In this example, we will look at how to use Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law to solve a bridge circuit. In this bridge circuit, the source is connected in this middle part here and instead there is a resistor in this branch. The main steps involved are shown here. The first is to label the branch currents. Recall that a branch is a path which connects two nodes. In this case, we can label the branch current here as I1. We can label the branch current here I2, the branch current here as I3, this branch current as I4, and this branch current as I5. Note that because of this independent current source, the current in this branch is 10 milliamp and instead we can label the voltage across this current source and suppose we assume this polarity and label it as V. The next step is to mark the voltage polarities across the resistors. So the end where the assumed current enters is higher potential and the end where the assumed current leaves is lower potential. Thus, we have this voltage drop for this resistor. And similarly, we can mark the voltage polarities across the remaining resistors. So plus minus and plus minus and plus minus. Thus in this problem, we have six unknown variables and these are V, I1, I2, I3, I4 and I5. We therefore need six linear equations to be able to solve this circuit. In order to do that, we apply Kirchhoff voltage law to identified loops and Kirchhoff current law to identified nodes. So let's do these steps. In this given circuit, we can identify one loop as follows and label it A. And this can be a loop, another loop B. And this can be another loop C. In addition, this is one node and we can label it as X and we can label this node as Y and this node as Z. Now we are ready to start writing the circuit equations. So first let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law to loop A. Recall that Kirchhoff voltage law states that the algebraic sum of voltages around a closed path is zero and we use passive sign convention in writing the KVL terms. So starting here for this loop A, going from plus to minus is a voltage drop and we use Ohm's law to write the value of this voltage drop which is 1000 I1. Next is another voltage drop. So this is 2500 I2. And finally, we have a third voltage drop. So this is 6000 I4 is equal to zero. Repeating the process for loop B, we can start at any component. So let's start here. Across the 1000 ohm resistor, going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. So this is plus 1000 I3. Going from minus to plus, is a voltage rise. So we get minus V and then going from minus to plus is another voltage rise. So this is minus 2500 I2 is equal to zero. Finally for loop C, we start here. Going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. So this is plus V. Going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. So this is plus 2000 I5 and then going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So this is minus 6000 I4 is equal to zero. Next we use Kirchhoff current law which states that the sum of currents entering a node is equal to sum of currents leaving a node. At node X I1 is entering 
i2 and i3 are leaving therefore we get i1 is equal to i2 plus i3 at node y we have i2 is entering i4 and 10 milliamp current are leaving so what we get is i2 is i4 plus 10 milliamp which is 0 0.01 amps and at node 5 i5 is leaving and we have two currents entering so this gives i5 is equal to i3 plus 0 0.01 so now we have six equations and six unknowns and these equations can be solved in general it is quite difficult to solve these equations by hand but these equations can be solved using a computer program or a scientific calculator and it can be shown that the obtained solution is v is minus 24.32 volt I1 is 0 0.27 milliamps. I2 is 7.02 milliamps. I3 is minus 6.757 milliamps. I4 is minus 2.973 milliamps. And I5 is 3.243 milliamps. Note that if we obtain a minus value for any current, then this means that in reality, the current is flowing through that component in the opposite direction. To obtain the current values, we can then find the power associated with the current source. In this case, the power associated with the current source is the product of the voltage, which is V, and the current, which is 0 0.01 milliamps which is 10 milliamps, which is 0 0.01. And we need to use the passive sign convention to decide the sign of this power calculation. Since this current is entering the terminal marked plus, we write the power calculation with a plus sign. And then when we substitute the values, the answer is minus 0 0.24324 watts which is minus 243.24 milliwatt. So the negative sign is showing that this current source is generating power in this circuit. We can use LT spice to reconfirm the solution. This is the same bridge circuit drawn in LT spice. Note that it is not possible to rotate resistors by 45 degrees. Therefore, the bridge circuit is drawn in this way. Also, for this example, we have placed the ground at this node. So the voltage at this node will give us the voltage drop across the current source. So by running this simulation and bringing the cursor at this node, we can see that voltage at this node in the bottom left corner is minus 24.32 volts as we calculated and the power dissipated in the independent current source is minus 243.24 milliwatt. So this confirms the solution.